wish I knew, I wish I knew What makes me me, what makes you you It's just another point of view A state of mind I'm going through So what I see is the doyen of death and so excited to show you this actual only one-of-a-kind replica of the jaguar hearse from the 1971 movie Harold and Maude. Hi I'm Ken Roberts I was a friend of George Barris's for 13 years unfortunately George has died uh, in November of 2015 when George sold his Batmobile for $4.2 million, I got thinking, what other car is out there that would be iconic? Immediately I thought of the little hearse from the movie Harold and Maude. A friend of mine did a nationwide search for a, a hearse. It's like the one that was destroyed at the end of the movie Harold and Maude. We finally came to the conclusion that none existed. So, one day on the phone I said to him, stupidly. Why don't we build our own? There. Isn't it, darling? I had them take away that monstrous thing of yours and send this one round instead. So much more appropriate for you, don't you think? Oh, one thing more, Harold. I telephoned your second computer date this morning, and she seems a very nice, quiet girl. Cute little thing, isn't it? I like it very much. We, uh, we found a roadster, uh, just like similar to the one in the movie. Found it uh, in Las Vegas, and I bought it from the Las Vegas uh, Jaguar dealer out of his private collection. We got it home to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, discovered that Paramount Pictures didn't really make a hearse out of the little roadster. It was just a movie fantasy. They actually took a, a Jaguar 2 plus 2, which is the hardtop model, and it's 13 inches longer than the Roadster. So now we had to go find ourselves a, a Jaguar 2 plus 2. Uh, pl bad, planning, uh, bad planning aside, we went out and bought ourselves another Jaguar. Harold is down at the garage. He has a new car, and he's just been tuning it up. It's very mechanical. What kind of car is it? It's a little Jaguar. Oh, looks like a hearse. Very nice, you're compact. Edith, I'd like you to meet my son, Harold. Harold, this is Edith... Fern. Uh, Fern. Very pleased to make your acquaintance. I think you should go and wash up, dear, and join us in the drawing room. The challenge became, uh, how are we going to build it exactly like the one in the movie? Well, we, we ran the movie, uh, lifted about 35 8 by 10 pictures. We studied them under a magnifying glass and a microscope to find out exactly how the original was built. Uh, eventually we discovered what Paramount Pictures used for the top. We went out and bought that automobile, cut the top off of it, and married it to the bottom of the Jaguar. Uh, the, entire, the entire build was uh, almost 40 months. Uh, the cost I don't even want to talk about. Uh, I wish I could turn the clock back to that day that I said, why don't we build our own? Uh, if I could do that, the car would never have gotten built. In the movie, Harold learns to play the banjo. Uh, his other activity was committing fake suicides for the benefit of his wealthy mother. So we needed to put something in the back. We thought, well, maybe a coffin is a little too over the top. So we picked a banjo case. And then we stuffed it full of all the fake suicide props that uh, were used in the movie for all these fake suicides. If you notice, there's a bloody hand in the uh, banjo case along with a, uh, a meat cleaver. 
There's a scene in the movie where he cuts his hand off in front of his number two computer date. I type up the schedule for the trucking fleet. She supplies the whole Southwest with chicken feed. Well, not exactly the whole Southwest. Although we do do a large business. Barley was very big last week. 1,500... <laughs> And the hatch is also like a modern SUV. It uh, it closes itself. I am just so thrilled to have it here and salute Ken and Glenda Roberts for doing this creative project that brings a bit of automotive history to life. Next mirror, so you can see the wheels on the heat track. But I've got to block. <laughs>